Hey everybody, welcome to Full Throttle Driving Academy. I'm Brian. I'm Dana, and we are here with Full Throttle Driving Academy. We're gonna be addressing some of the beginner questions that people have. So one of the biggest questions we get is, what kind of clothing do we need to wear and what kind of things do we need to buy? So we're gonna start with the bare basics. If you're, you know, if you're doing a day at autocross, you don't need to buy a lot of this stuff. You're going to rent a helmet. You can wear your cotton clothing. But we're going to talk about people who are thinking that they are traveling down that slippery slope. Slippery slope. So sure. we're, we're going to go top to bottom in things that you might want to consider and things about those things that you might want to consider as well. So what do we put on our noggin Let's here? Let's start with our melon on top of our neck. First and foremost, I'd say the most important piece of equipment would be the helmet. You agree? Yeah, I'm protecting a very valuable brain up here. She's got a few brain cells. <laughs> we want to keep them as long as we can. She's had many concussions as well from non-auto driving incidents. And but about me. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I like talking about her. She's my wife. <laughs> All right. So, helmets. Number one. Needs to be an automobile racing helmet. Yeah, we found these really cool helmets. <laughs> we, we were gonna go buy these like retro motorcycle helmets and we showed up at, at an event one time like, oh, oh <laughs> you're not getting on the no, track with that. No, don't play that. No, you <laughs> gotta have fly. a real live racing helmet. You're looking for it, the demarcation on the back. It's called Snell rating. This one's an SA 2015. And that means it's still valid. I believe they last uh, I believe it's 10 years. I think so too, but they'll mm. tell you, you need at minimum a 2015. The other thing to keep in mind about helmets is once you've dropped it or you've had a bad accident, you need to get a new one because they are not good to go forever. Once they've had an impact, you definitely need to get a new helmet. Correct. And when you go to the event, many organizations will inspect your helmet, make sure you're up to snuff. They'll give you a sticker on your helmet. I have two from two different organizations. Now you might be thinking, well, let's keep going down the body here. We're on the neck. Wait, 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 wait. Let's do the eyes. Oh, eyes. Yeah, because you're kind of picky about your eyes. So I personally do not wear sunglasses when I'm driving. If it's really sunny, I'll pull my visor down. But I find it uncomfortable to go under my helmet. Brian loves these yellow glasses, um, yes. which provide great contrast. These are photochromic glasses, actually. They start yellow, so on an overcast day, you get great contrast. These were designed... For golfers, I found this yellow shade to be really, really good on an overcast day. And then, as goofy as these look, when you get in bright sunlight, these um, gradually shift to a dark charcoal. And they shift on a full spectrum. So, on a sunny day, they're phenomenal. And then in the morning, or an overcast, or a rainy day, you get a great deal of contrast. And they fit under my helmet. I like that they have a thin frame. Anyway, you got to try it on with your helmet before you decide to, what you're wearing. If you get a visor, you can choose from all kinds of visors. This one's an Iridium, really cool looking gold visor, but it makes me hotter. And he's I, already too hot. <laughs> I just don't like feeling enclosed with the thing down. I kind of like, yeah, that, I like air me. going through my face, and I feel like I have a little bit better vision. Now, you might be okay. thinking, oh, sorry, I was going down the head. Oh, the, this thing? thing yeah, I was, I was working. Well, do you want to talk about the nose guard? What's the nose guard? <laughs> <laughs> There's no nose to? guard. Your nose oh. is vulnerable. Well, while we're still on the head. Oh, yeah. There's a couple things for comfort. And let's go for the ears. Do we have the ear protection? Yes. Somewhere in this mess, I have ear protection. You go ahead and show what you're going to do, though. With the One of the oft-overlooked pieces of technology is ear protection and if you're driving in a in a race car or in a car with a modified exhaust system street car those suckers get really loud and if you drive all day long at full throttle you're going to have some hearing issues you'll have tinnitus and anyone we know at the racetrack who runs a race shop they're almost they're so hard of hearing they can't understand a word you're saying so Protect your ears, and we found we're not endorsed by this company at all. But um, nor we, any company. Hey, companies if, that want to endorse us, yeah, bring it. <laughs> if, if Bose is watching this, we've probably sold a hundred of these things. This is a Bose Active noise canceling headphone system. It has a battery. It lasts the entire weekend and then some. 
And these are just simple earbuds, but they do active noise canceling. They send a, a, sign, a, a wave exact opposite of what it's reading, and it sends a sound wave the opposite to counteract it. So anyways. Noise canceling. I think you all know what awesome. noise canceling is. <laughs> so how do you make them stay in your ears? I've discovered a trick which looks equally as goofy as my glasses. I found these headbands on Amazon and I put a headband on like this to hold my ears in. And then I wear this thing. It's a balaclava, I think. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, you did it. It's fire retardant. And it's just a head sleeve like this. And then you don't make your helmet so grimy if you wear one of these. And you don't have to get a real nice one um, unless you're racing. You do need to wear a fire retardant balaclava. And then you can put your helmet on and your earbuds are in and your ears are protected. All right, let's move down. So we've got the noggin figured out, and now there is the Hans device, or we call it Hans, but that's sort of a um, Kleenex type term for the for the. Protector. So when when might you want use one of these things? Well, they're required on a lot of uh, tracks, and so we'll show you how it comes in and out of the helmet, and it's very easy to put on. But I will tell you, if you are the least bit claustrophobic it's gonna bug you at first because it limits the way you can move your head and limits the amount of rotation that you have to even view mm -hmm. an apex. So sometimes I'm wanting to look at an apex way over there and I can't. So it's a little hard to get used to, but get used to it because it is a lifesaver. And we should clarify, if you're just going to a high performance driving event with a street car and you have normal seat belts, that is perfectly acceptable. In fact, many organizations will allow you to do time trial, which is timed on the same track, there is some passing going on. It's more of a race type environment. You don't have to have racing harnesses for those. This is only used if you have full, you know, four point or six point harnesses in a car with a full, with a half cage or a full roll cage. Yeah. And so. one other point, if you're having an instructor and you have a race, a, a car with, with a roll cage with harnesses and, you, and you're wearing one of these, you have to have the same safety equipment in the passenger seat for your instructor. You can't make them use a seatbelt and give them the crappy stuff when you have this thing. Yeah. Enough said? Yeah, enough said. So let's move on down the mm -hmm. body. Although you just mentioned the word seatbelt. So while we're on the subject of seatbelts, which doesn't have anything to do with our attire, why don't you show the CG clip there? Okay. Again, if CG Lock is watching or anyone knows these guys, We've sold hundreds of these too, so you should pay us a commission. Uh, CG Lock is a very cool little simple gadget that goes, you attach it to the uh, bottom of the seatbelt. A regular seatbelt. A regular not a car seatbelt. It just screws in. They have great instructions and it sits here. And what it allows you to do is basically really tighten your lap belt and it holds your lap belt super tight because in a, in a, driving environment, you're gonna be sliding around in your seat, especially if it's a street car. This thing helps you get a lot more tension on the lap belt and it holds you in place. Yep. $60 product, really good. So the next <clears throat> thing you have to think about is what are you gonna wear on your body? And if you're at <laughs> autocross or you're a brand new beginner, you are welcome to wear quote unquote normal clothes. They should be cotton because if they're a synthetic material, it doesn't bode well in a fire. Um, but if you mean you're gonna you could, get- you could ignite and well it could it stick could, to your body to and your be kind of mm. nasty but if you are going to get into driving slash racing you're going to want to get a full on suit so are gonna, i are you going to model that for us no i'm not going to model it but it's pretty darn cool one i just got a brand new one because i was in an accident and had to have the last one cut off me by the ambulance folks but um this is alpine stars one thing to note about these is that it has to be FIA rated for a race car. So in other words, don't go buy a go-kart suit. Go-kart suits are not rated for FIA racing. And so it has to be rated appropriately. So be sure to catch that. So essentially that if you were to be incinerated, that will protect you from the heat of the fire for some duration of time and prevent you from burning up. Yep. So okay. always they, a good thing to have. And they look great. It looks great on her. <laughs> Um, they're hot. 
You don't need a driving suit if you're doing high performance driving event or even time trial. Most of the time you get that suit. Typically, if you're doing club racing, a lot of time trialers do wear them, especially if you're going to have all the safety gear and a fire suppression system in your race car. That's when you have to have that thing. Okay. All right. So that's the suit. Now we work down. Obviously, you should have cotton socks mm. on because you want those also to be non. You skip our body part. Oh, I skipped a body part. Hands. Maybe I was going to put my gloves on my feet. <laughs> you want to go through gloves? <laughs> gloves. Get some gloves. They're Why? fire rated as well. What kind of gloves? Um, the kind that stick to your steering wheel. <laughs> that's a good point. If you have a street car, you most likely have a leather steering wheel, but not always. Sometimes they make a steering wheel out of micro suede or Alcantara. I love that fabric. It sticks really well to the fabric on the glove. If you have leather, what I found is some of the gloves have rubber on the palm and then in the fingers, and that helps you stick better on the steering wheel. You can use a lighter touch. And you wanna get thin gloves, fire retardant, and you wanna get good steering wheel feel. Some of the gloves are really thick and bulky, I like the thin ones because then you can feel everything the car's telling you. And I'm going to make a dorky statement right here, but when you put your gloves on, if you have a watch that you rely on and you want to look at your watch, just make sure that before you get out to grid, you've got it uncovered or maybe even put your watch over your gloves. Because sometimes I find myself fumbling going, oh, I can't see my watch and what, I want to get you, to it. What are you doing on your watch in it when you're in the grid? Checking texts? Checking the temperature. <laughs> Checking her Instagram. And, you know, the stock market. I don't know. See if we can afford this weekend. That, All right, let's get to our feet. So you're hopefully wearing some cotton socks that are not some, you know, polyester material. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the shoes. I'd recommend driving shoes. There are driving shoes that you can wear on the street. They have, the thing about driving shoes that will help you drive better, two things. Number one, they have a thinner sole than an athletic shoe and they're also they don't have any overlap like there's nothing sticking out on the sole no lugs or wide treads or anything it's very in case, flush. In case you have tennis shoes with big lugs on them you know, like the, <laughs> the, the trail running <laughs> shoe you know all right or like a hiking boot these are flat they don't have very good traction on the you know on the tarmac and you don't wear these around like I always bring two pair of shoes as soon as I get out of the car I like to put on my comfortable shoes because these things are not comfortable. You They're not that comfortable and they'll melt. So we go to <laughs> California desert racing a lot and like button willow and some of these really hot courses. And I have literally had my shoe melt under my feet. So <laughs> you don't want to wear and them all the this time. This is a, a free speed tip we'll give you and incorporated. See the back of my shoe? Yeah. Oh, wow. The back is completely... Oh my God. I got these shoes. Those are new. They're new. You've worn them twice. I've raced three weekends in these oh shoes. They're God. already rubbed. So this is my right foot. Um, we're big proponents of when you're driving, we'll get into driver inputs in future videos. If you keep your foot, your heel firmly on the floor of <laughs> yeah. the car, instead of some people lift their heel up and they push the pedals with their foot completely off. Yeah. Like, do, you, do, do, yeah. Do, they're do. a little... Yeah. Don't do that. You want your feel your heel uh, platform, and then you you can move it, and you get more precision that way because you always know where your foot is relative to the pedals if you keep your heel planted. And some cars even have a little floorboard groove or a little plate that lets you put your heel up against it, and then you can really get good with your right foot on the pedals. So mine's already destroyed, and I'm gonna have to use some duct tape. <laughs> we're not opposed to duct as long tape. as it's fireproof duct tape uh. i think we went through head to toe in one of our next sessions we're going to start talking about some of the fun toys that you're going to need to buy that are not apparel that you're wearing but i think we covered it if you're starting to get into racing or, or driving and you think you're going to really enjoy this you definitely need some good equipment you're protecting your body, your head, your everything. So um, one more comment perhaps on helmets. The most important thing with the helmet is not how pretty it is. They are, they come in all shapes and sizes. The most important thing is get one that fits the shape of your head. There are lots of shops, good race shops will let you try many, many helmets on. They actually have measurement tapes for the shape of your head, not just the size, but the circumference and you have an oval face or you know a squared off face 
and the helmets are sized and different brands fit different types of And you heads. can even do that online. You can do all the <clears> measuring and everything online. There are some places that do custom mm -hmm. helmets. And if you Did want we... to get super fancy, you can put a radio system in your helmet like we do. And then she can yell at me when I'm on the track from a walkie talkie and you can put the radios and stuff in there. Yeah, I do a lot of yelling. <laughs> Um, I think we covered it. So head to toe, good gear is important. Safety is important as always. And in some of our upcoming videos, we're going to show you some of the other fun things that you can invest in. All right. Bye for now. Thanks everybody. Bye.